Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art and culture, and this it's Billboard Breakdown. So this is one of those weeks where I expected a lot of activity and I didn't really get it. I mean, this is supposed to be a week where Harry Styles and to a lesser extent Paramore impacted the charts, and yeah, that didn't happen. In fact, if we're looking at a week where summer grooves seem to be settling into gear, it's here. Which led to a little bit more stability and inactivity than I expected on the Hot 100 right now. And nowhere is that more pronounced than in our top 10, where for the first time in weeks, the number one is stable with Despacito by Louis Fonzi, Daddy Yankee, and the remix with Justin Bieber. And it looks like with the exception of US YouTube, it might hold steady for some time, as it's dominant in sales and streaming and airplay has actual real momentum. And while it's facing competition, it's not really coming from our number two, That's What I Like by Bruno Mars, which might have stronger airplay margins for now, but that's slipping as it's getting outstripped in every other category except YouTube, even despite some real strength in sales. The real competition is I'm the One by DJ Khaled, Chance the Rapper, Quavo, Justin Bieber, and Lil Wayne. Better airplay traction at number three, and it's got YouTube, it's just lagging a little bit in sales and streaming. And enough radio can easily compensate for that, and it's got the momentum to get there. Then, somehow still holding on, is Shape of You by Ed Sheeran at number four. And look, I don't know what to tell you. Despite slipping on YouTube and sales, it's still got a ton of radio, and streaming is mostly solid right now. Not quite the case for Humble by Kendrick Lamar holding on to number five, though. Yeah, on-demand streaming is great, and it's getting better better radio than I think anybody expected, but overall streaming numbers are starting to slip, and while it is still holding, there's a part of me that doesn't think this will last long in the top 10 against some real serious competition with real momentum. Now it will hold up against something just like this by the Chainsmokers and Coldplay, which might have risen up to number 6 on slowing radio momentum, but given that its sales and streaming are shrinking right now, I put it more on the slip from Mask Off by Future down to number 7 on streaming losses, stagnant sales, and radio stalling out than any strength for the Chainsmokers. Now, it might be a similar case for Exo Tour Light by Lil Uzi Vert at number 8. It still has considerable YouTube and streaming, but nothing else. But then again, I've been predicting a slide for this for a while now, and yet somehow it's still in the top 10. Then there's Stay by Alessia Carr and Zed at number 9. A lot of radio and sales traction with no real signs of stopping. I can see this going up higher, and yet this leads to our single new arrival in the top 10, Malibu by Miley Cyrus. It's here thanks to big sales and not insignificant streaming to soar off its debut, but the radio seems a little bit tentative on it, so it'll be interesting to see how much staying power it will have, or if it even sticks to the top 10 beyond this week, and I'm not sure it will. And on that promising note are losers and dropouts. And we're looking to the area where things have slowed down the most, it's probably here. Most of our dropouts, they were fading out naturally. Down by Marion Hill, Moves by Big Sean, Shining by DJ Khaled featuring Beyonce and Jay-Z, and most of our losses, they fall into a similar predictable territory. Territory. Good Life by G-Eazy and Kalani goes to 90 because that new Fast and the Furious movie has faded out pretty quickly from the public conscience and the song is somehow even more forgettable. 1-800-273-8255 by Logic featuring Alessia Cara and Khalid goes to 64 because the album hide is fading for good reason. And Yeah Boy by Kelsey Ballerini goes to 84 as it fades out naturally, as you would expect for a late album single considering the album came out in 2015. Where things get a little bit more interesting comes in our returning entries and gains. Where in the former category, we got two. My Old Man by the Zac Brown Band returning to 87 thanks to the album dropping. And Bon Appetit by Katy Perry featuring Migos going to 59 because of that god-awful video. And considering how Katy Perry continues to routinely humiliate herself surrounding the promotion of this song, even despite the YouTube, I can see this being roundly ignored by the radio and flopping pretty hard, or at least I hope so. As for our gains, well, I already talked about Malibu. And while I would love to talk more about how Redbone broke into the top 30 by some miracle great for Childish Gambino. The only significant game we got this week was for Drinking Problem by Midland up to 85 off the debut last week. That's it. One country game that anybody could have seen coming. Wow. Okay, maybe a short week then. So let's get with our new arrivals. Starting off with number 100, Me and Amore by Shakira. <laughs> Mira que ojitos bonitos Me quedo otro ratito 
admit, I'm a little bit surprised that even though Shakira's lead-off single for her upcoming album El Dorado was in Spanish, she's not following it with an English single for Crossover to the Radio. And I checked the album, there does appear to be songs in English on that record. And yeah, there's still a part of me that's a little bit disappointed because I've always found Shakira to be a fascinating and kind of unique songwriter in English. And to me, that doesn't always translate as well in Spanish, it's just not as interesting when I translate it. And it doesn't help when the production is pretty lackluster here too. And yeah, Shakira is a potent presence on any pop song, but when you give her a pretty basic love song, which yes, I know she wrote, the production needs to be on point to make this seem special, and this, yeah, no. The pitch shifted squeaking over the hook, the hollowed glitching melodies, the by the number trap touches around the tropical percussion. It feels entirely too stiff and mechanical for a singer as limber and organic as Shakira is. And it sure as hell does not capture anything close to love struck or even all that melodic. Yeah, I hate to say this, for as much as I like Shakira, this is pretty mediocre. And it gave me a headache a lot faster than it should have. And that's not a good sign because this is not a good song. Number 98, Ghost in This House by Lauren Dusky. I'm all that's left of two hearts on fire That once burned out of control You took my body and soul I'm just a ghost in this house So, okay, context here. Apparently, there is still some fragment of relevance to the voice because contestant Lauren Dusky managed to lodge this on the charts, a cover of a 1990 country song originally recorded by Shannon Doe, a perennially unlucky country band that despite the five number one hits on the country charts, they haven't exactly been remembered by that many country fans in comparison with more of the neo-traditional scene that emerged around the same time, like Brooks and Dunn, or Garth Brooks, or Alan Jackson. Now, this was not one of those number ones, and it's kind of easy to see why. It played much closer to easy listening radio and its tones and production, despite being a decent enough written song. And honestly, I actually might prefer Lauren Dusky's cover more. The country guitar tones, they have a little bit more body in comparison with the flimsy tones you often got in the late 80s and early 90s from mainstream country always bothered me how the production has not aged well. Dusky conveys melancholy pretty impressively well for a decent song, and for a live cut, the strings and the pedal steel, they sound great. Look, I know the voice isn't really relevant anymore, if it ever was, but yeah, this? Not a bad song at all. Pretty good. I like it. Number 95, No Promises by Cheat Codes featuring Demi Lovato. Promise me no promises. Oh, no, no. Just be careful, na na. Love ain't simple, na na. Promise me no promises. So I've been hearing some rumblings for some friends of mine that this song was coming for the Hot 100 and that it was not good. But truth is, is that I've been aware of Cheat Codes for some time now. They're trio DJs in the tradition of Swedish House Mafia, or maybe more accurately Major Lazer. And while their breakout hit Sex did well around the world, they got Demi Lovato to break into the US market. And though I hate to say it, yeah, they're right, it's not all that good. For one, I have no idea why they told Demi Lovato to stick with their high cooing on the verses. She's a raw belter, that range does not flatter her at all. Especially when cheat codes make her vocal pickup sound so damn frail, even if they eventually give her the space that she needs. And yet of course, cheat codes didn't even produce the vocals on this song. And yet, she's not the only singer here either. With DJ Trevor Dahl stepping up and honestly not being all that impressive, Demi Lovato blows him out of the water. Especially as he's playing very hesitant and asking asking Demi not to fall that fast for him in the lyrics. But my larger issue comes in the production as a whole. The hollow synths and pianos of the blocky trap beat that eventually break into a drop that sounds a little like a clumsy DJ snake imitation that's hollowed out even further as if we wanted that. Overall though, it just feels like a shrill, clumsy imitation of a sound that feels entirely increasingly forgettable. Which is something I hate to say about Demi Lovato. If she ever does put out that next album, can she go back to pop rock and not this? Please? Number 93, Glisses Lo Cuatro by Malou. And on 
topic of Shakira, thanks to the success of Chantaje, she's giving some other Colombian artists a shot at the American spotlight. And with Despacito currently at number one, you can expect more Spanish-speaking artists to persist in the Hot 100, especially if their sound is ready and able to cross over to the mainstream. So enter into Maluma, who's been racking up considerable success in South America and on the Latin charts, but this is his first solo hit to land in the Hot 100. And it's actually a pretty good one. It's still a little bit weird to have acoustic guitar backing up a blocky beat and hints of trap hi-hats, but at least has a little bit more organic flavor to anchor some of the tones, and the melody's not bad. Frankly, when you consider the guitars and when you translate the lyrics, <laughs> honestly, I'm surprised how much they actually work for me. Taking a situation where both people in the relationship have found new partners apart from each other, despite drifting back to each other occasionally, and instead of playing it like with overwrought angst like Hinder did on Lips of an Angel, or depression like how Kid Rock and Cheryl Crow did on Picture, Maluma is kind of more practical about it. The more the merrier. Let's make the bedroom bigger and let's all be happy together. Now, let's be clear. This only works because the entire song seems to play things with a borderline comic sensibility thanks to how inevitable it all seems. Kind of reminiscent of that Burt Reynolds and Sybil Shepard musical from the 70s at Long Last Love directed by Peter Bogdanovich that really is nowhere near as bad as so many movie critics have said. And like with that movie, this only kind of works because our lead has charisma and seems to be having fun, which seems to be true here. He's not Shakira levels, but really who is? In other words, I might be kind of lukewarm on the increasing number of Latin songs on the charts right now, but you know what? I actually kind of like this. Pretty solid song. Check it out. Number 92, Whatever It Takes by Imagine Dragons. Okay, so Believer was a clusterfuck of AWOL nation proportions, but Thunder had some promise, and I'd like to think that Imagine Dragons was able to correct their course even further with another promotional single. And here's the thing, once you reconcile with the fact that it doesn't really sound like anything that Imagine Dragons has ever put out for, you'd see some actual quality here. The glassy blur of guitars that eventually picks up some real grinding swell on the hook, the muted tones that surround Dan Reynolds' very fast delivery on the verses, and a percussion groove that might feel mechanical but never all that stiff or clunky, and that's a plus coming from Alex the Kid, and vocals that actually sound like they're in Dan Reynolds' comfort zone for once. This is pretty solid. And yet, the more I read through the lyrics, there's this odd sense of grim cynicism that runs through them that can be a little bit jarring to me, as he acknowledges the cost of falling for fame and a deep-seated fear of living that typical life. But it's the bridge that seems to say more here, acknowledging their music was part of the system with a vision that's kind of slipped them by, and he's going to do whatever it takes to clay claim to at least some of it and reclaim a feeling of significance, even if it does kind of mean selling out to that system. Oh, look, overall, the more listens I give this song, the less I'm entirely sure I like it and the sentiments behind it, but it's probably the best track I've heard from that new album thus far. It does raise some interesting questions, so okay, Imagine Dragons, you got my attention back. I want to hear more. Number 80, Bad Liar by Selena Gomez. I'm a bad liar. I don't think there is a pop star that has frustrated me as much in recent years as Selena Gomez has. I mean, I liked her a fair few songs with the scene, but Stars Dance, it was an utterly abysmal debut solo album. Her comeback record revival, yeah, it had its moments, but I'd only call it okay at best. It's kind of tepid and lyrically inert and really kind of boring. And yet her song with Kygo has been one of my favorite hits thus far this year. So I at least had a hope there'd be something to her new single, Bad Liar, that it would be worth listening. Especially considering that's interpolating a baseline from the talking head psycho killer. And look, it's no psycho killer, even if David Byrne endorses it. If anything, it reminds me a fair bit more of Hands to Myself and the incredibly close pickup of the hand percussion and how thin Selena's voice sounds across the song. I hate to say it, but someone with her vocal style should really opt for vocal production with a little bit more body to it. Not these weedy little synth fragments or pitch shifting, or at the very least, not try to belt on the bridge like she does here. And that's before you get to the writing, and again, it's less that it's outright bad as it is just kind of awe 
odd and weird. That Battle of Troy reference does kind of make a weird sort of sense in capturing the intensity of the passion, but it's awkwardly juxtaposed against lines describing the lover as serpentine, a sentiment that's not really mirrored by the grooves which aren't serpent-like at all, or how Selena describes herself as an amenity, or the bridge where she actually says, let's make reality, actuality, a reality, where I kind of get the sentiment, but that's just the wrong way to phrase that lyric. Again, it's frustrating because Selena has constructed something of a submissive sexual persona that on the surface could seem interesting, but the more I decode the song, it just kind of feels sloppy. There's not just much here. It's certainly not better than an Ain't Me or even Good For You, which had the benefit of some good atmosphere, but this, uh, look, the best thing about this came from a song 40 years ago that could at least ground its weirdness made it work. I recommend going listen to the Talking Heads instead. Better song. And finally, number 62, Rollin' by Calvin Harris featuring Future and Khalid. I've been thinking way too much And no way too gonna drive I got anger in my chest I got millions on my mind And you didn't fit the picture So I guess you want the vibe You know, I can't believe I'm saying this but Calvin Harris might be on a hot streak. Slide had a great bounce and groove to it and managed to make the match of Migos and Frank Ocean ridiculously fun. And when he managed to make the combination of Pharrell, Young Thug, and Ariana Grande work on Heatstroke, especially with that hook, I had no idea what to expect going further. I'm probably going to cover his album. But now he's got a meteor challenge. Blending Future's dark brand of melancholic nihilism with Khalid's more sorrowful touches all against a dance groove, and that can be tough to match. Credit to Calvin Harris for at least trying trying with the watery cascades of synth against more staccato bass line and shimmering cascades touching off the piano. But if you're comparing this to Slide and Heat Stroke, this can't help but feel like a lesser cut. And it's for exactly the reason I predicted it would be. Khalid's post-breakup angst and Future's blur of brand names paired with admittance of his own monstrous nature and more flubbed rhymes to boot, it feels like they need production that's darker with a little bit more smolder. Not this lockstep groove that doesn't even function as a good driving song. Look, I don't think this is precisely a bad song because it could have used a little bit more groove to stick the landing. At least for me, there is potential here, but not quite all the way there. It's not bad by any stretch, but not exactly great either. But again, the production is the best of this, so Calvin Harris's streak might continue? Okay, well, it's not best or worst of the week. For that, I'm giving the best to Felices Lo Cuatro by Maluma, with honorable mention of that Ghost in the House cover by Lauren Dusky. It actually worked for me. And worst, ugh, nothing really struck out as outright awful me, but both No Promises by Cheat Codes featuring Demi Lovato, and Me and Amore by Shakira, they blew the potential of their respective demons. It's more disappointing than anything else. So, dishonorable mention and worst in that order. Next week, hell, knowing our luck, it's probably going to be a few Machine Gun Kelly or Linkin Park songs. We can only hope otherwise. Until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Billboard Breakdown on Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.